صلي على محمد وعلي محمد السلام عليكم I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, tonight. This is the 13th night. And um, we're going to begin this evening with the Quranic recitation. We're going to have uh, Hajj Ali Rida begin in Arabic. And then we're going to have Maryam Shafi do the English for us, inshallah. Please uh, welcome uh, Hajj Ali Rida up to the stage with loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين آمنت بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم الفاتحة Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. By the fig and the olive, and by the Mount Sinin, and by the secure city Mecca, we have certainly created man in the best of stature. Then we return him to the lowest of the low, except for those who believe and do righteous deeds, for they will have a reward uninterrupted. So what yet causes you to deny the recompense? Is it not Allah the most just of judges? Thank you for that beautiful recitation. That was Surah Tateen, by the way. And uh, now we're going to begin the program with Salat um, al-Sheikh, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Kazaruni. Please uh, welcome to the stage with a large salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله يا رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطاهرين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين I know hardly anyone is around, but Salawat could have been slightly loud. Could we have Salawat, please? I know hardly anyone is around, but Salawat could have been slightly loud. Sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. Aoud billahi min al-shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillah al-rahman al-rahim. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. Aoud billahi min al-shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillah al-rahman al-rahim. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. Aoud billahi min al-shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillah al-rahman al-rahim. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. Aoud billahi min al-shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillah al-rahman al-rahim. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. Aoud billahi min al-shaytan al-lain al-rajim. Bismillah al-rahman al-rahim. Allahu Rabbil fi muhkam kitabeh. قال الألو أولم تلك تأذيكم رسولكم بالبينات قالوا بلى قالوا ادعوا فما دعاء الكافرين إلا في ضلال And those being punished will say to the keepers of the hell Pray to your Lord to lighten the punishment for a day 
and those being punished will respond at your messengers and pray to you and Lord you with open signs of punishment for a day. They respond, and yes, they did. Being punished and the sleepers would say, keep praying. But know that your prayers or the prayer of the disbelievers will be in vain. Last night, Imam Mardini opened a discussion or addressed, touched upon uh, the issue of how critical it is during the month of Ramadan. Opened a discussion Part of our or own action to pay attention to the orphans. And the conversation after the QA after uh, developed into a theme that uh, we decided to use this theme for inshallah tomorrow night and uh, to address a number of factors uh, exactly what does it mean to pay attention to the to the to the orphans generally but specifically during this month Tonight's topic, I wish Brother Muhammad would have been here because tonight's topic came out of a very critical question that he posed. And uh, at the beginning when I reflected, went back, I didn't think that it is so sophisticated until I actually uh, decided to uh, what we call deconstruct the question. On the surface, it appears to be a theological issue. The question, the way he posed it, we certainly know that in our life we pray. Is there a scope or possibility of prayer existing after the death? No, that in our life we pray. The appearance you would say, well, if you are going to ask or possibility in your prayer for existing fashion uh, or oh, some other issues that by the by when death the comes you that's the termination well if you are going to it shouldn't be that possible in your prayer but once you uh, address it it's or some other it becomes a totally different by when death we certainly have that's the number of hadith in which cites this notion that death terminates alion Amalun wala hisab. Wa ghadan hisabun wala amal. This world, the material term, uh, this world that we live in, is a period that allows us to act, but there is no accountability apart from what we construct for ourselves. But the in hereafter, once this uh, death takes, takes place, it is accountability, no more actions, no more. But uh, the in he this has been interpreted in a number of ways. There are those. Uh, the, generally speaking, there are two schools of thoughts that they discuss this issue and they, they link it to Barzakh as well as the Day of Resurrection. What is Barzakh? If you read uh, literature, Christian literature or other uh, monotheistic faith, they have similar kind of argument. We certainly know that there will be a day in which full resurrection takes place. Everyone, every single human being and everything else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is going to be resurrected. So that humans, right from the beginning of the creation up to that time, will stand up to offer uh, their account. What about people that uh, die in between, between now until resurrection takes place? What happens to them? This period of suspense that uh, souls exist in waiting until the, the call comes is called Al-Alamul Barzakh, the world of Barzakh. How are we treated during this, this period of waiting? If we put all the literature together, we come up, uh, away with that people are classified into three different groups. The, those who are pure, 
Even the waiting of Alamul Barzakh is going to be a miniature scale of life for the heaven that they ultimately going to go. And those who are absolutely evil, their Alamul Barzakh is going to be some kind of an introduction, the beginning of the, the, the punishment that they're going to receive. With regard to these people, Quran says, even in their existence of this Alamul Barzakh, they are taken to fire every morning and every evening so that they understand where they are going to go ultimately. So Barzakh is going to be for this group of people a, a, a place in which encapsulates uh, what, what is going to happen ultimately on the Day of Judgment to them. So these are the two issues, two different classes. The pure one, their Barzakh existence and reality for them is going to re replicate the heaven. So they will have comfort, everything else. The, those who are absolutely evil, the, uh, the existence in Alamul Barzakh is going to replicate that ultimate life that comes after uh, the, the day of resurrection. What about others that don't fall into either category? They are neither pure good or pure evil. Where what we call the ordinary people that have little bit of good, little bit of evil together. What, what is going to happen to them? Scholars have began debating this, that for people that fall into the third category, Alamul Barzakh is going to be an extension of this living here. They may not have access to direct deed that they perform themselves, but they certainly benefit from uh, what we call the consequence of deeds that they have performed during their existence. If you establish a school, a hospital, an institution that the public benefits from it, that act itself has a reward. But at the same time, there are others who come to this, these institutions and benefit from it as a continuous benefit. That act was recorded in your uh, book the moment you committed it. But as these people use it, the benefit, the continuous benefit, is recorded for you. So during Barzakh, you begin to receive what we call supplementary benefit, which is the secondary benefits out of your own deed. This uh, notion of Alam al-Barzakh being an extension of your life, they say this is where you get, begin to get benefit from it. Yes. The hadith from Amir al muminin and others that say Al-Yawm Amalun Wala Hisab Wa Ghadan Hisabun Wala Amal Correct, you directly cannot change your, your, your uh, di direction of your life or orientation of your Alam al-Barzakh but uh, broad public uh, deeds or social ac act activism that you have been involved that continuously brings uh, benefit you will benefit from it during that period so a person, say, that builds a mosque, that the person is no, no longer here. I mean, I can give it with regard to this center, Marhum Allah as a, as a founder of this center, he will be given thawab for the direct act that he committed and the sacrifice that he made. But every time somebody comes to the center and benefits, because he was part of that uh, process that created it, he and others that were involved, they benefit from it as well. So this notion of Alam al-Barzakh for the ordinary people becomes an extension of their life. Uh, there are, with regard to whether the perfection is possible, major scholars say that dua is not possible after alam al-barzakh even within alam al-barzakh because dua you are asking for, to improve your own situation and perfect yourself 
that kind of activity comes to an end with your own, with the death. If you go to uh, Tafsir al-Mizan, for example, Alama Taba Tabai, and there are a number of other scholars uh, that have discussed this issue, that dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to improve your life through prayer is not possible because that came to an end with, with death. Uh, there are others. There is a, a second uh, school of thought that says, no, it is possible. And uh, they, ch they don't contest, but they have their own rationale when they, they discuss this. They say, first of all, let's look at the Holy Quran. If we look at the Holy Quran, we certainly come across a number of verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that ordinary people on the day of judgment ask Allah for change. One of the classic examples is when suddenly people who have not paid attention to the hereafter, and remember we discussed the relationship between uh, hereafter and the avoidance of sin, uh, those who have not paid attention to uh, the, the fact the hereafter is imminent and it could come at, at any moment, suddenly they are confronted with the reality and the punishment. What do they say? Rabbana akhrijna na'mal salih. Take us out of here. We promise we are going to change. That itself is a prayer. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ Those who disobey and are blinded by the signs of Allah and do not follow the command of Allah, they, they live but constantly associated and accompanied with evil. Until they come to us, then they will wish they a gap or a distance between evil deeds of theirs and themselves. I wish there was a huge distance. So this asking somehow to, for their actions to be removed from themselves is, is a kind of prayer. On the day of judgment, fire or hell or whatever we, uh, punishment is uh, takes shape then humans remember that there was guidance there was course of action that they dis disregarded at that particular critical moment this individual becomes wishful and says that I wish I would not have wasted my time and put, send something forward for the permanent life that I'm going to live in. These are all prayers asking Allah. And with regard to people that are being to, to be punished, with regard to people who are uh, given access to reward, even they Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and ask. Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba anna al-rits. Ya adhaba anna al-hazana. Inna rabbana la ghafooran shakoor. Those who have been given after being test, tested and passed the test, they say, okay, that's the direction, that's the path, you can go to heaven. They become praiseful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That now uh, that Allah has removed all the, uh, the, the sorrow that they suffered during their life, and now this is the consequence, this is the result that they're going to go forward. So dua is possible. And by the way, as I began to search, uh, the best group of people that have spent huge amount of time on this relationship between dua on the day of judgment or in hereafter and perfection of human being are the mystics or afa that primarily their argument rests on one fundamental problem whenever body and soul come together there is a limitation and perfection can take place 
only through this gradual moving away and getting close to the Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even on the day of judgment if we believe in ma'at al-jismani which means that physical uh, 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 resurrection then body comes back with the soul so the process starts all over again and prayers and everything else comes into this uh, process of perfection that we have to move through Alhamdulillah Allah Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guided us. And without Allah's guidance, we would not have achieved what we have achieved. Praise is a kind of prayer. So they argue about this. And then there is another hadith that they cite. Alhamd sorry, another verse. Alhamdulillah alladhi sadaqana wa'adahu. This alhamdulillah kind of format is constantly being repeated in the Holy Quran. So not only those who are being punished, they ask Allah to relieve their pain, reprieve them, even take them back uh, to, the, to the old days where they can start all over again and compensate for the new life. Those who have been sent to heaven, they become pra praiseworthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly praise Allah. So these are all different types of prayers. It may not be in a one particular shape or form, but these are there. And then they cite a hadith from the Holy Prophet uh, that, وسلم, that says, uh, people of heaven, as they go through time, ليزدادون جمالا وحسنا كما يزدادون في الدنيا قباحة وهرما as you age during your life, this temperate life that we are in, we tend to lose that youthfulness and everything else. And a degree of old age takes over that we are no longer that young person that we were. So the aging process takes over in this life. Uh, uh, the Holy Prophet says in the hereafter, it's the reverse process takes place in heaven. For people that uh, go through heaven, they w have a much better chance of actually getting younger as they go th through aging process. It's the reverse aging process in heaven uh, compared to what we have in life. So what we have uh, regarding prayer and perfection the best we can say is that not to rely on the, fa on the fact that we may be given the opportunity on the day of judgment to pray to somehow elevate ourselves. We must focus on our deeds and action right now. Secure it now through our action rather than say uh, wait until the day of judgment that we may have an opportunity to, for our actions or our prayers to be acceptable etc but these two groups of people remain in uh, exist two schools of thoughts within the scholars and they both argue that no one says it's not possible the other group of people say that it is possible and that's uh, something that we ha we have to be mindful so going back to the question what brother Muhammad said is it possible well there are a group of people that say it is possible and there are the group of people that they say it is not and both argue to support their own point of view uh, I, I would have liked that uh, uh, Brother Muhammad would have been here to see if he had a follow-up question uh, regarding this issue, but hopefully once he comes back, we will ask him again. Uh, this is the, the next topic that hopefully, inshallah, we will spend some time on it, a great deal of time, is, as I said, this notion of how do we uh, address our responsibilities towards orphans. Last night, if you remember, uh, I briefly touched upon this, that orphan, or, uh, supporting orphans, the needy, the poor, and the destitute, during this month becomes an extra added obligation that we have to spend uh, time and focus upon. 
It's part of familiarizing ourselves with the notion of social justice and its justice in its uh, wide expanse. But when we come to how do we deal with orphans, there is a huge literature that obligates us. I mean, if nothing else, uh, we see uh, and uh, of Amir al-Mumin on the night of the 21st of Ramadan, few hours before his martyrdom, focuses on this issue of Allah, Allah fil aytam. Don't allow the, uh, the, the orphans to be thrown out of your community and to be marginalized and to be looked at and looked after, etc., etc. This is, inshallah, something that uh, uh, we will discuss tomorrow night. Let, let us pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to guide us and support us in this month as we struggle. Uh, to, to become better or true human being, inshallah. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, hasten the return of our living Imam, inshallah. Uh, also, we recite Surah Al Fatiha for the souls of all those who have lost, we have lost them, but specifically for Marhum Allah Sheikh Muhammad Jawad Shirri. So let's start with Surah Al Fatiha. One last point, I have been asked to dedicate one lecture to the stories that happened during the month of Ramadan, in early part of Islam. So, uh, during the month of Ramadan, what th major event took place in Islam that happened to be during this month? They said, address it and see whether we can learn something from uh, uh, th this issue. So, inshallah, if we get a chance, one of the nights we would discuss these stories that are relating to month of Ramadan, but at the same time, we, we can learn something from them. Now we go back to the question and answer. Well, let's look at how uh, the obligation progresses. First and foremost is the obligation of the person to offer the prayer, fasting or anything else. But if, let's for argument's sake, uh, the person wasn't able to do it or didn't do it, but he recorded in his will that I have 10 years of prayers or 10 months of Ramadan of fasting, etc., etc., uh, so it becomes part of the, his will and the obligation first and foremost goes to the eldest son. When the will is open, the eldest son becomes obligated to, to think if he can do it or distribute it between the families. So discharging that responsibility falls on the shoulder of the eldest son. What happens when it's huge? Some people I have seen, the eldest son starts, if it is a year or two, then with every prayer that he does uh, for himself, uh, makes an intention and adds one prayer for his father as an as a issue of qadha, to recap for what he's done. But if you have in cases that you have a huge number of years, and it's not going to be possible for one person to do it, uh, now they, they call it, you ask somebody else who you are certain that they can do this well enough, and you pay them for the time that uh, for, uh, for for the time that they have uh, they're going to spend in in reciting prayers and everything else. It's possible, uh, which they call it. For example, salat al istijari. You bring somebody, you uh, ask somebody uh, to do the job for you. We do it the same in Hajj or Som or anything else. So there are certain things that nobody else can replace or can do. If they are financially uh, they owe financial dues for the poor and the needy, zakat or khums. It has to come out. Nobody else can pay it. 
But with, re with regard to religious activities, obligations, Salat, Som, Hajj in particular, these three, you can ask other people to do it for on behalf of, say, my mother, my father, or whoever it is. Yeah, that person is left with a debt. That debt is his religious obligation. So the fact that somebody else is now beginning to offer it on his behalf, on his behalf every time a prayer is done, uh, the load is lessened. And then that reward of that prayer is given to him. He, he would have been better off not to put himself, bless you, to put himself through this process of pain and then for somebody else to go through it. There is a hadith that says, nobody would do this better than you do. Imam, Imam Amir al-Mumineen sallallahu alayhi wa tells Imam Hassan, don't leave your responsibility for somebody else. Do it in your life. If you have uh, something that you need to spend and poor, needy and so on, don't rely on your children to come back and do it. You do it during your life. So it, is, it would have been his obligation, it was his obligation. Now for whatever reason he has not done uh, some of or all of his deeds, uh, we can ask either the, the son himself, the eldest son, if not we can give it to somebody else, but compensate for the time financially. Yes. Hang on, I think the sister had the question. Okay. Well, they call it, in Christian uh, literature, they call it purgatory. It's uh, a period we don't know because one end of it is linked to Allah's decision when Allah terminates the world and the beginning of uh, the, the hereafter begins. Until then, it's this period of waiting. All the souls, uh, the body disintegrate, but the souls remain waiting in suspense. And the three categorization that uh, I listed uh, or classification pure good, pure evil, or in between. Oh, those two are already settled. Their cases are already settled. If somebody has been so evil that there is no contribution that can make huge difference in, in, in the destiny, it's not going to be there, ni neither here nor there that they, are, they may receive a little bit of benefit from certain deeds. But it's for people that fall in between. Neither pure go uh, good, neither pure evil. How do they get benefit from this life? The debate is that since they cannot act and perform a deed themselves to improve their own condition, is there another way? This is why we have a number of ahadith uh, encouraging the family to pay sadaqat uh, for the deceased, recite Quran, for the, for the deceased. Pay or uh, feed uh, fuqara and uh, poor and so on during the month of Ramadan and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the thawab to go to the deceased, etc, etc. Or might, the deceased himself or herself might have projects that they have initiated uh, or instigated during, during their life. That act gave them the credit for it. But others benefiting from it is a continuous kind of income, let's call it, for him, or credit for him that he will benefit during this period of waiting. That ultimately would tip the balance one way or the other. If he, let's see, uh, say if he is in, on borderline between being evil or good, and, or heaven and hell, or be, between being saved or not saved, these additional uh, thawabs that come in will tip the balance towards uh, being saved. That's the whole issue. That he may not have direct access to action, but he certainly can benefit. This is why there is a hadith that says, if you are asking for, it, uh, to, uh, for eternity, for year, your name to become everlasting, there are three major issues that you can focus upon. First, bring up children uh, in a correct manner in which they would uh, constantly 
think of you and their presence remind everybody else of how good you brought them up. Every time they see somebody sees your daughter and your son, may God bless his soul or her soul for bringing up such, such a wonderful children. The second one, elm, knowledge, that you part with it. As you part the knowledge and you develop your own studentship around, these students will constantly remem remember the relation of the professor and the teacher with them. May God bless his soul or her soul for imparting this knowledge or teaching us this one. Uh, and we constantly do it. Every picture of every professor that I had in my life, if I see it, I immediately recite Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is the third, you establish what they call public benefit institutions. So long as it exists, people benefit from it. If you organize a clinic, and people constantly go through this clinic and benefit, particularly in our country back home, where a wealthy individual establishes a clinic and then gets few pieces of land as an endowment to support the clinic, brings in doctors and uh, nurses and so on to work for free to, uh, to say, cure or deal with, with, the, uh, with the needy around. Every single person that goes in and gets attention and comes out, it's a constant credit to you that you will benefit during that alam barzakh Until the day of judgment. And then things would change. Sister. Well, that's a vision. It's the beginning of Alam al barzakh They say, uh, uh, scholars claim that in the same manner that we have full, we are agent to be able to change our lives through action in this life, there is only a small, uh, short period of time at the end of our life that they say, they call it yaqda, lahvatul yaqda. It's the moment moment that the veils are removed in front of our eyes and we see the back what how we have spent the life and we see the consequence in the future during that particular time toba is no longer acceptable there is no repentance because toba is supposed to be based on your assessment of your own life not seeing the result and then the story of uh, Pharaoh, for example, if you remember him, when the, he was drowning, suddenly he said that, Oh Lord, I accept what Moses is saying, and uh, not now. It's too late. Lahmatul Yaqva is a short moment at the end of everyone's life. And if you are associated with people or very close to them, you see suddenly some individuals that as they get close to that particular moment, there is a spasm takes over, that the, the life becomes, their body becomes so tense, and there are others that big smile on their face. They suddenly at that particular moment see that they have wasted 75 years, 80 years for nothing, and then others that mo at that moment they say that all the struggles were worthwhile. That's, that moment is the beginning of Alam al-Barzakh, which the soul departs and then uh, stays, whether close by or wherever, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls for the final day, which is, we call it, Yawm al-Qiyamah. So the moment that the person dies until Yawm al-Qiyamah, that expanse of time is called Alam al-Barzakh, but begins with exactly the point that you raised, that with the the moment of realization that that's it. Uh, either the, work, the life has been worthwhile or not worthwhile. So, can you only believers go to the Well, that's a, another debate. Uh, in, th in theology, whether good deeds are only rewarded to those who have faith 
or good deeds have their own intrinsic values if, that you would benefit from it, and even if you don't have faith. This is the, the, the debate. Uh, the same thing exists in Christianity, in Judaism. There are those who say good deeds will be only rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have faith in Allah. There are others that say no, good deed intrinsically has value. In the same way that we talk about uh, human dignity. The humans have dignity irrespective of whether they are in one faith or the other. And the verse in the Holy Quran is clear. لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَم the sons of Adam, we have given them an in intrinsic nat natural dignity that should not be violated. So, man bil hasanati falahu ashra amthaliha, verse in the Holy Quran. It doesn't say that this hasana, good deed, has to come from a faithful person. You perform good deed, the deed, uh, deeds themselves have reward that you will receive if they are done properly. And if you punish woman job if you do bad deed you will get the punishment. So the person who has no faith will be rewarded. I remember Marhum Mutari Rahmatullah in Tehran many years ago uh, discussed this issue, challenging those close minded individuals that they said it, it ha only you have to be revolutionary, otherwise good deed is not going to be acceptable. Uh, he focused on the same thing. These individuals' good deed will be rewarded to them in the same way that their shortcomings will be punished. And they have to be balanced at the, day, at the end of the day whether which one takes over. And there are a number of verses in the Holy Quran regarding the uh, Jews, Christians, Sabians, and others that if they perform according to their own faith, they will be rewarded. It's, as far as who's going to be saved, who's not, I don't believe any, any of us can say that it's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This brother, then we come to you. So, you mentioned last time that there is a degree in heaven. Mm -hmm. Is it the same way in hell? Is that in the church or Sure. There are many, many levels uh, in hell, and as there are many levels in heaven. Uh, and if you read the story of Mi'raj, the ascension of the Holy Prophet into heaven, you will see at least the, the uh, metaphorical use of language to explain these various layers. Even with regard to the Prophet, when he says that in the, on the first heaven or the first level, I came across this Prophet or that Prophet. On the second heaven, I came across this Prophet and that Prophet. That indicates uh, the degree and the variance that exists. It's a, it's a rational argument. Uh, on the one hand, we have Ali that says, الْغَطَاءَ مَزْدَدْتُ يَقِينًا If all the veils are removed, my trust, and yaqeen and conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to be changed by even a small iota. That's one side. Prophet Ibrahim is ul al azm, one of the grand prophets. Arani kayfa tuhi al mawta. Show me how do you resurrect the dead. Awalam tu'min qala bala. Walakin liyat ma'an qalbi. So that I, my heart gets stable. Grand prophet says I want some unique signs that brings stability to my heart. This is one example and that's another example. Are we saying that they are going to be on the same level? No, certainly not. Uh, Prophet Musa and Khadr. Clearly in the story of Khadr there is a, an ample evidence that shows uh, Musa was inferior to Khadr. Because knowledge of Musa purely rested on what we call material legalistic uh, uh, precepts. Khadr had inner knowledge that Musa did not have. Are they going to be on the same level when, when they go to heaven? No. So in the same way that we go to hell, the same thing. Are we going to suppose that uh, I am a sinner, I'll go to hell and I'm going to be put uh, in the same level as Yazid or Muawiyah or somebody else? problematic. 
So these levels are there in heaven. We, we can actually detect this as we uh, 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 deconstruct a number of verses in the Holy Quran regarding uh, hell and heaven. It clearly indicates this layering and various degrees and positions. You are still young, brother Ali Zadeh. Um, Well, we, we, I agree with you in principle, uh, the simplicity, but sometimes thinking out of a box helps in, uh, in becoming a critical thinker. I learned a lot from the brother's question, uh, particularly when I went back and I started reading uh, uh, Irfan literature regarding perfection in the hereafter. I had not, never come across, uh, across it before. But I'm going back to the point that you raised that you said nobody has come back from Alam al Barzakh. There are uh, grand scholars of Irfan that they can traverse the world and go out, die, and then come back themselves. And they travel uh, in this distance. Marhum Sayyid Ali Qadi, Allah uh, Sayyid Ali Qadi, was one of the well known uh, figures of what we call contemporary in a sense because he died about 50, 60 years ago and uh, what, 40 years ago and he has had a number of uh, students he was well known that he predicted his death way back in his uh, will uh, that he, he signed that on Wednesday the 22nd of Shaban I, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon this is the time you will come into my room at that particular time and I have gone. So there are individuals. Abdi ata'ni, aj'alu kamathali. Ana aqul kun fayakun wa anta taqul kun fayakun. Once the relationship, the synthesis between human being and Allah reaches a point that we become true abd, the true uh, submitter to the command of Allah, by, by definition, Allah's power percolates through this. Why was Isa so special about resurrecting the dead, etc., etc.? The verse in the Holy Quran is, uh, is quite clear. It says, through our power, we gave you the power. So once the connection, uh, since you speak Farsi, tayarane morg bini, this is the, 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 if you are mesmerized by the flight of bird, remove the shackle from your own feet and see the flight of men, then you will be mesmerized. When, because we are constantly stuck in this world material life, we really no comprehension of what happens if we release ourselves and the spirit becomes free. The beauty is when the spirit becomes free, it can go anywhere. It, the debate is now with regarding to the world, the, the, the transformation from material into light and so on, going if you are living on the borderline between uh, uh, material and uh, light, this is exactly the same thing. You can trans, transverse this, uh, this world and go into beyond it and come back. And there are people who are doing it. Marhum uh, Sheikh Kuchani actually in one sleep, in one night has a book about death. You can re read it. 
looks at the moment of death in graphic detail as he goes through stage by stage by stage until the day of resurrection. Stops short because he doesn't know when it's going to happen. It is possible, but I agree again. But at the same time, from an academic point of view, it opens up a scope that, okay, uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu advises Amir al-Mu'mineen uh, in this manner. He says, when you see the people are focusing on the superficial issues of faith, you go deep, use your intellect. The problem, the crisis that we have today is that people are stuck with the superficial issues. While we are instructed and commanded submission through the use of intellect. That's a different thing. I don't know why it should compromise the, uh, the, the final judgment because the verses in the Holy Quran are quite clear that both those who are being punished and those who are being rewarded, uh, the force of circumstance pushes them to pray and ask for change or be praise, praising of Allah. If we uh, rely on, well, we don't do our own deeds and then we rely on the possibility of prayer in the hereafter that might, might secure or save us. No, that's not the idea. This is why I was trying to explain that this is more of a theological uh, in-depth analysis of what, what might happen, but we're still obligated with our deeds. It's a mercy for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that this al barzakh, the life of barzakh, is becoming somehow an extension of this life. In, in a sense, that what happens in this life, what we have initiated and instigated, so long as the benefit continues, we can benefit from it in, in, during that particular period. Once we come to standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the judgment day, everything breaks down. It's a totally different world. But we should not, because it's a different world, there are circumstances that forces us to ask Allah. When somebody is being punished, uh, and we, metaphorical use of language, he says, can you ask Allah, can we have a reduction of uh, this heat or something that we are suffering? It's a, it's a kind of reaction to situation and a kind of prayer. Whether it was going, it's going to save them, that's a different story. But at the end of the day, it's our deeds here that are critical, that we have to focus upon. There are possibilities through Allah's mercy in the here, I mean, in the, this uh, purgatory or the suspense period, that we still benefit from uh, some of the deeds that we have instigated, or our, our family would send to us. Every time some, uh, a son or a daughter recites Quran uh, or gives sadaqah or something that feeds the poor and so on and says, Oh Lord, for the, say, for the soul of my father or my mother, it's going to be given to him or her. This is a blessing. Otherwise, if as soon as death takes place, it's uh, uh, either this or the other, then it would have made it very difficult. Just prayer.
No, that's a different, you see, uh, the possibility of prayer exists uh, when somebody says, oh, praise Allah, that's a certain kind of prayer. So when we have verses in the Holy Quran that says people that are directed to heaven, they say, Alhamdulillah, praise, praise be to Allah. This is a kind of prayer that is organized for them. Uh, or those who are in, uh, the, once they are confronted with punishment, they say, we wish or I wish, oh Lord, can you turn me back? Let me start all over again. It's a kind of prayer. Uh, it's asking for a situation to be changed. Whether it's going to, and the verse that I recited uh, clearly indicated that it's going to be in vain. Because now you can pray as much as you want. What you are going through is the, the, the realization of your deeds that should have been different, but you didn't do it. There is another hadith from Amir al-Mumin, sallallahu alayhi wa it says, tabahu. People are asleep, or they are sleepwalking. It's only when they are dead that they realize that they wake up, that there is another reality, another world around them. So inshallah, we will continue with our uh, conversation tomorrow night. Inshallah, we will focus on uh, the orphans. So prepare your questions that you have regarding this issue. Well, we can if we get a chance, but this, is, this becomes a very specialized topic. Other people may not want that kind of in-depth assessment. Uh, but we try to address it if it requires them, inshallah, when they, but these, there, there are two issues. One is orphans, the other one, the major events of uh, month of Ramadan, uh, and what we can learn from these major events. Uh, this is much more topical rather than uh, academic or specialized. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Just for a moment. Is it on? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I want to just thank our beloved uh, Molana here for uh, enlightening us this evening, and uh, inshallah, everyone.